Randy Rabinowitz. Randy is a partner, no, is a private practice attorney who specializes in legal issues affecting injured workers such as OSHA, workers' compensation and product liability. Previously, Ms. Rabinowitz uh, has served as a senior consultant to OSHA, an administrative law fellow and ad adjunct professor at the Washington College of Law and is counsel to this committee. She has also served as union co-chair of the American Bar Association's Occupational Safety and Health Law Committee. Ms. Rabinowitz received her BA from the John Hopkins University and her JD and LLM from Georgetown University Law Center. I'm honored to be here this morning. My name is Randy Rabinowitz and as a private lawyer, I represent unions on OSHA matters. And I imagine you won't be surprised to learn that I have a different view than Mr. Taylor. And I do believe that there are several changes to the OSHA Act that the Congress ought to consider that would help improve OSHA's ability to conduct effective corporate-wide investigations and to protect workers from the kinds of preventable tragedies like the one we just heard about, which killed Mr. Torres Gomez at Cintas. Many companies devote substantial resources to safety and health and take their duty to protect employees seriously. Unfortunately, far too many companies do not. So I don't want to be seen as trying to condemn all of corporate America, but I do think there's a problem among some bad apples, and the question is how to fix that problem. Mr. White has talked about what management can do to fix that problem internally. I would like to focus my comments on what OSHA can do to strengthen its ability to protect workers. In my view, OSHA could better use its inspection resources if, once it found evidence of severe health and safety violations at one location of a multi-facility company, it looked for patterns of misconduct within the company and demanded abatement of the problem company-wide. Large companies have the organizational resources to make safety and health improvements, and I think, unfortunately, the Bush administration has relied far too heavily on voluntary programs including an alphabet soup of partnerships, alliances, and consultative programs, even though they have no empirical research to show that any of them have any effect. OSHA's Enhanced Enforcement Policy, or EEP policy, was adopted in 2003 as a response to a New York Times expose on enforcement problems within the agency. It provides guidance to OSHA staff on how to conduct wider investigations when a serious violation is found at one facility of a multi-facility company. The EEP policy, in my opinion, is too limited, both by design and in the way it's been used. There need to be changes in the OSHAC to make sure that we remove some of the obstacles to uncovering patterns of corporate misconduct. One of the real problems with the EEP program is that it leaves OSHA with too much discretion. It may look great on paper, but the agency doesn't have to do anything with it. <laughs> And it could, it's just unfortunately oftentimes an empty promise. So one suggestion is that Congress should consider ways to require OSHA to conduct corporate-wide investigations in appropriate circumstances and not just rely on OSHA's discretion in doing it or not doing it only when there's a big New York Times series and everybody's watching. Um, OSHA also needs to overcome some of its own um, bureaucratic obstacles to conducting corporate-wide investigation. The OSHA statute imposes compliance duties on employers regardless of whether they operate one facility or hundreds of facilities. OSHA itself chooses to enforce the act facility by facility in a piecemeal and disjointed manner that office often makes it difficult to achieve communication and collaboration among the various parts of OSHA. There's no reason they have to go about it that way, and they should be pressured to fix that problem. Um, I also think OSHA needs more information on corporate-wide injuries and illnesses. Section 8 of the OSHA statute grants OSHA broad authority to adopt regulations requiring employers to record and report workplace injuries and illnesses. There is no legal reason, in my opinion, that OSHA could not impose a new requirement on large company to report this data across facilities. But unfortunately, OSHA's record of timely adopting regulations is dismal, and without a congressional mandate that it do so promptly, it's unlikely to act on its own. 
Uh, further, once OSHA finds a severe hazard at one facility of a multi-site employer, OSHA needs information on whether those conditions also exist at other facilities within the company. Current law allows OSHA to request such information, but it leaves OSHA with few effective ways to compel production within the six-month statute of limitations during which OSHA has to issue its citations. So OSHA often negotiates for far fewer documents than it really needs to address the company-wide problems. And Congress should consider how it can um, maybe arrange ways to get around the six-month limit. And then finally, when OSHA finds a problem, a company is not required to fix serious and willful hazards until all its appeals have been exhausted. And that can sometimes take years. I know of one case where it took more than a decade. And during that time, while the appeals are pending, there's no obligation for the company to go out and investigate other facilities or to fix things. And OSHA is often reluctant to inspect other facilities and cite the same problem while it's litigating the validity of its original citation. This committee has twice reported legislation to fix that problem. And I would urge that it consider doing so again. Thank you.